Okay, so it's time for another DVD and Blu-ray update. And I'm gonna try to be as uh, cheerful as I can, but <laughs> right now it's just one of those days maybe, uh, although they tend to drag out way longer than just days these days. These days. <laughs> but I'm gonna make this video anyway, even though I'm feeling not in the best mood right now. <laughs> Um, because I've been planning to make this video uh, today, so and I have 10 titles to talk about. Uh, so let's just get started um, with... Uh, I have 6 Blu-rays. And uh, first up, the, Fug the Fugitive. And I, I thought this was pretty good. I think I was expecting a little bit more from this. Um, it was just... Uh, I, I feel like uh, the ending was way too contrived. <clears throat> the um, <clears throat> solution or whatever. The um, the way the way they got there, the way Harrison Ford was on the run, was a very entertaining, very um, very um, suspenseful, very just a lot of fun. And then towards the ending, um, I just did not feel it. I kind of lost interest. I didn't really care what happened. Uh, I mean, I didn't really care what the you know something happens in the beginning, and then there's a mystery that Harrison Ford is, needs to solve basically. And when he when he does that, I was like. I don't really care anymore, <laughs> to be honest. Um, so, yeah, kind of lost me there in the ending, but um, or the last third even, maybe. But uh, it, it was it was pretty good. Um, <clears throat> then we have uh, We Are the Millers, which is a comedy that I was looking forward to watching and had been wanting to see for a long time. And I wasn't I was expecting a pretty good comedy, but I did not think that, that it was it, it was okay. Um, basically. Um, to put it very sort of uh, concretely, uh, with these road movies, uh, with some of them, they don't—they're not really put together that well. They're not—they don't feel—they um, feel disjointed. They feel poorly edited in a way, very um, uncreative. I don't know what to, how to explain it, but basically, uh, they start out here, <laughs> right, and then. They go to this place, and something happens here, and then you know, some shit go goes on at this place. Then they continue because they're done with this now. Continue to this place, and then something happens here. Then they continue here. There are other stuff that follows them. In, through you know through these places, or uh, you know, but still I felt that it doesn't work very well uh, when you make it make the move make movies this way, especially at least not when the comedy is lacking. Uh, I didn't. I don't know. I just I did not think that it was that good. It was it was fun to watch, but it was uh, it was you know vulgar and out there for the sake of it. It wasn't very very witty. It wasn't very funny that often. It was just you know, eh, it's fun to watch, but very forgettable. Um, and I know that some people do like this movie. And I'm, I'm sorry. I'm being a little, maybe I'm being too harsh, but I did not really like it. It was fine, you know. But it, I was expecting a little bit more. Then we have um, Kick-Ass 2, a uh, sequel that I was looking forward to. I saw the first one in the movie theater in 2009 or whatever, and I really did like that movie. So again, I have it on Blu-ray, I think. Yeah, it's down there. <laughs> down there. Uh, and I did not really like it as much that time. But still, I was looking forward to, watch, to watching the sequel uh, a, a lot because of Jim Carrey, I think. Um, ultimately, it ended up being an acceptable sequel, but one which, as with most sequels, doesn't need to be made. Not really. Because um, it's just very, of course, very sort of derivative of the first one, if you know what I mean. Or it um, doesn't offer a whole lot of new stuff. Um, of course, there are new characters, and uh, that's, that's one thing that they, I guess they managed to pull off with this one. You feel sympathy for the characters, the main ones mainly that has been in the movie. I mean, that was in the first movie, um, and uh, so so fairly good characters. But the comedy was definitely lacking. The comedy was not. I didn't. I don't know if I laughed really when I watched it. I think I bear. I don't know if I laughed at all. I don't know, <laughs> but it was enjoyable. The story is fairly well told. It just isn't a great movie. Um, Next movie was interesting and I definitely enjoyed this, although at some parts it was definitely a little overly melodramatic or 
overly sentimental, but it's a disconnect. Basically, this movie deals with, um, I guess you could say it deals with technology and where in the internet and stuff, and um, communicating through the, on the internet and what can happen. But really, it's the, it explores the negative sides of that, um, of all the shit that can that can happen to you. Uh, through being active or by after you know from being active online you know as a consequence of you know there are a lot of shit going on there Be people being exploited people um, um, yeah stuff just stuff like that and uh, that's that's what this movie deals with and uh, I mean yeah it expl explores the consequences of uh, you know a handful of characters or whatever a handful of different storylines um, and some stuff that happens to them involving or so something something online triggers a series of events or you know whatever and that's what it's about um, and some of these I guess come together um, some of them maybe don't come together but uh, anyway um, and maybe I don't know if they came together really it wasn't I guess it wasn't one of those movies where you have several storylines and in the ending they all intertwine I don't think really you can say that it's one of those movies, but it is. Um, it's interesting. It's not great. Um, maybe it kind of went under most people's radar, if you know what I mean. Um, but um, it was. Uh, it's definitely worth check worth checking out. I I enjoyed it. I guess we could just continue with the Blu-rays. So we got two more. Uh, this one I really liked. This was this was great. Uh, Koyani Skatsi, Life Out of Balance. Um, although, I mean, this it's not a spoiler because it's called Life Out of Balance, that's what it says here. But it should, they should have removed that, it should only say Koyani Skatsi. I think when you're watching the movie you kind of forget about Life Out of Balance. You're just watching the movie and trying to make up your mind about what, actually, what it actually is about. But uh, the explanation comes a little later on, even though it's a little, it's kind of obvious what, 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 hap what happens, you know. Anyway, uh, the movie is um, it is um, it's a documentary, but it doesn't have a narrative. It doesn't have a storytelling. Uh, no dialogue, except for you know, there's a, mu um, a score, a great score, written by Philip Glass, I think. Uh, yeah, and um, in that in that score, there you know, there's a Koyan Iskatsi chanting vocal or whatever. But you know, other than that, there's no dialogue, only visuals. Uh, and it deals with uh, you know modern, you know modern uh, development of technology or modern technology, uh, you know how omnipresent or uh, ubiquitous or whatever uh, technology is, and um, yeah, it explores that and um, mainly te the, te the technology part, but also sort of um, takes a look at uh, people and uh, the way. In, a, in the way that people are, in a way, exploited by this technology and uh, the mass... I'm finding this hard to explain, um, but basically it takes a very um, pessimistic and, um, in a way, a pretty sentimental look or approach at this whole thing, at where the world is going and that maybe things need to change. Uh, and it starts with, um, in a way, not, not maybe not the dawn of man, but how in the beginning there was nature who, which who, uh, which you know, sort of lived in peace, or you know it, there was perfect harmony or whatever, you know, and then man came with their, their bulldozer and you know teared everything down or you know whatever, and then it goes on from there, and um, it it's uh, mainly sl sl slow motion and. Uh, time-lapse footage but also some real-time footage but um, it's hard to explain it, it like I mentioned when I when I talked about this movie when I unboxed it it's like Baraka and Samsara which uh, they rather explore different cultures in the world I believe this one is more about technology but um, it's like that no ju just a score and images and uh, but still, despite that, despite that, the fact there's no narrative, or no no narrator, uh, narrate, yeah, 
it, uh, you get a good idea. It, there, it's like a story is being told because the images they tell you what's going on without words. And uh, it, it's also a subject which maybe the director felt that we don't have any words for it. We we need to show it, you know, the way it looks because that's the only way to to um, demonstrate it. Yeah, so I'm I'm not, I'm not entirely happy with that uh, <laughs> review. But uh, I recommend you checking it out and read up on it a little bit more. Maybe, well, actually, don't read up on it too much before you watch it. Do that later in that case, because I think watching the movie with um, without any preconceived thoughts or without any without a, too big of an understanding of what the movie is about is probably the better for the better. I think. Uh, anyway, last Blu-ray, and then I have four DVDs. Uh, is A Woman Under the Influence by John Cassavetes and I have seen one before which was uh, Minnie and Maskowitz which uh, Gina Rowland was in as well and Rowland she's in this too this might be her best performance according you know according to a lot of people it might be and um, it's very interesting it's um, the storytelling is very unconventional you know long drawn out scenes uh, very real, you know, a lot of real, a lot of realism, and um, it it's very, um, very, very kind of mundane in a way, very down to earth at least. Um, it's it's hard to, it's a very simple movie in a way because it's about the the mother. Uh, she she she. It's her sort of um, yeah. It's about her struggle to cope with her mental illness or about. Uh, her, uh, her and her husband Nick uh, <laughs> that has to, to uh, cope with this mental Ill illness of hers of uh, Gina, Gina Rowlands um, and uh, it's not it's not about much more than that and then ultimately she has to be put into some sort of not an asylum but what the hell do you call it uh, just a place for for people who have something in here like I do uh, no but um, then uh, it, yeah, it, it doesn't really give you a lot of explanations, uh, you know, of the past. Why, what, what happened exactly? Um, but at the same time, um, as at 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 the, at the same time, as I said, it's very sort of simplistic in that way. It also is challenging, like I also said. But it, it's um, oh man, I don't know. It's just it's hard, a hard, difficult movie to me. I'm gonna have to give this another 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 watch in the future I think because I don't know if I got it really there's I don't know if what what there is to get but I don't know if I got it because um, I didn't really get that much out of the movie and it is a movie which is supposed to be just a masterpiece according to many one thing I do want to mention though which is um, concerns um, the realism in a way uh, I'll show you the clip right here it's uh, basically t towards the ending of the movie it's not a spoiler, but Gina Rowlands, she she basically gets up from the table and as you can see here in the clip, her daughter in the movie, she, well, Gina Rowlands, I guess, puts her hand down on something and some fluid fluid is launched into the air, hits the daughter in, in the eye, which was, you can tell by her reaction that it's, it's not planned, you know, it hurts, it's unpleasant that she gets this coke or coffee or whatever, it look, it's brown, I don't know what the hell it is, but she gets it in her eye and she doesn't look like she's enjoying it and that obviously wasn't planned and I'm, and I'm mentioning it because that's just so unusual to see a scene like that normally they would remove that I guess and do it again but it might have something to do with the fact that the filming of the movie, the shooting of the movie I read that it was very hard on Gina Rowlands and they were worried about her she probably took her role very seriously and she really got into the zone, really into her character and when they did the scene, maybe, even, maybe it was a long take uh, you know, they it was it was basically not not an option to do it again maybe um, and then this happened and you know let's just include it in the movie and maybe that's just for the, for the better in a way because it adds to the realism I don't know it's just a just a thought that I have it might not be true at all I'm just just brainstorming but um, yeah but that was just that was very interesting to me that something like that happened I was like wait a minute so whether that's interesting or not to you. Well, it was to me, uh, and I, I don't know. Anyway, we have a few more titles. I'm not gonna dwell on these too much. Um, uh, Clifford, uh, comedy that I found 
two days ago at the local DVD place and I was happy to find this, it's a Region 1 DVD I don't even know if it has been released on Region 2, I kinda doubt it and this is most likely out of print and uh, fairly hard to come by I think, I mean, it might, I don't know uh, on Amazon it costs 13 in, on the US Amazon the price for a used copy is 13 dollars and for a new copy 45 dollars and I got it for maybe seven, seven eight. Uh, so I thought that was a decent price for this. Um, I've been wanting to see this. I don't know. It's not. It's not great. It's it's an okay comedy. Martin Short. He plays a, a kid. He's like 42, but he plays a 10 year old kid, which is very bizarre. But um, in a way, it works. Obviously, you know what? It's it's supposed to look like. He's not supposed to. He doesn't try to look at like a child. He looks young for his age, but. He, 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 they don't intend for him to to look like a child, uh, but it still is a little strange. Uh, anyway, uh, he does his performance pretty well. Um, he is very, yeah, I thought a memorable uh, performance from Martin Short. You also have Charles Grodin and Mary Steenburgen in, Bergen in here. And basically, um, Martin Short, who plays the character Clifford, has nothing to do with a big red dog, by the way. Um, he is obsessed with this dinosaur land, or whatever it's called. And uh, he wants to go there, and his uncle is supposed to take him. But when his uncle gets other plans, Clifford, well, he's a mean little bastard, basically. So, just because his uncle tells him, I'm afraid we can't go there, you know, it's time for some revenge. <laughs> and Martin Short is, you know... You know, can I, can I even little bastard? <laughs> and uh, it, it wasn't great, but the last sequence, yeah, that was a lot of fun. That that I like. I liked the movie just because of the last scene. Basically, he 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 goes on a roller coaster ride, um, and uh, the way they built that was pretty 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 impressive. You know, based on how the rest of the movie had been before. Um, it was pretty well done, and I definitely enjoyed the last sequence. Uh, so I recommend checking it out for that last sequence. Um, then we have a, a, hung, a Hungarian movie, I think, uh, called uh, Control, a film by Nimrod Antal. Uh, this is basically feels like an allegory to me um, because it takes place in uh, the subway uh, subway system in um, somewhere doesn't leave the subway uh, and you 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 kind of keep wondering why does everybody live in the subway what what's the what's the deal with that and they don't really explain that so in that sense it's kind of surreal to was kind of surreal to me doesn't have any supernatural elements not really still feels surreal to me and feels like a clear allegory uh, just people. The main character it feels it feels like he is he wants to it sounds cliche but try, wants to find a better life wants to uh, get out of the situation which he is currently in and maybe they somehow use the unglamorousness that's probably not a word of the subway to show this I have no idea uh, but um, just feels like some sort of me metaphor uh, and a lot of symbolism in there definitely uh, and it was interesting I got it last summer I think and I haven't been wanting to watch this but I watched it two days ago or something and it, it was yeah it was pretty it was, it was interesting uh, it's hard to categorize it's basically it's kind of like a com it is a comedy it's pretty funny but also a bit of a drama pretty psychological and as I said fairly fairly surreal hard to categorize though uh, then we got two TV shows first one I really liked uh, and I have uh, am currently watching season two uh, this is ER, and uh, I, I've always heard, oh, I've always heard about this show, um, but I've never really. It's not my kind of show, like a hospital drama, pure hospital drama. There, are, there, there are some um, glimpses into the main character's life, personal lives too, and a very good portion of it, just a, a very good sort of ratio between uh, work and personal lives. They pull that off very well. Anyway, I never thought that I would like the show that much, but I wanted to give it a go because I found it for such a such a cheap price, and I'm happy to say that I really like it. And uh, yeah, 
I really like it. It's certain shows just draw you into their world in a way which you can't really explain. You can basically the best way you can explain it is by a recommendation to, in this case, my viewers to watch the show. A lot of people have probably seen it already, uh, and just kind of hope that that same feeling is given to you. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. It just is this very uh, cozy feeling, but at the same time, it's it depicts a very unglamorous, you know, line of work or whatever, and um, you know, a very tough on the people who works there, and it's not supposed to be cozy, maybe. But that's how I feel. I don't know. Uh, that's how I. That's how. That's how I. That's what I get from it. And main, I just really like the characters, them interacting with each other at their work, and um, uh, the characters that are great, by the way. And there's definitely comic relief. There's um, great cinematography. Um, yeah, just very a very impressive show. I'm looking forward to continuing. Last thing is a Swedish DVD, which I just thought that I'd show. Uh, I usually show Swedish stuff if they have English subtitles. This unfortunately, unfortunately does not, but I thought it was interesting to talk about anyway. So it's a show called Alt Faller, which translates to Everything is Falling. Yeah, basically. And it's a, it's a comedy, uh, I, guess, I guess, some drama in here too, definitely some more um, you know, melodramatic uh, themes. But, um, you know, mainly it, it's a comedy. And the reason why I wanted to show this is because it's interesting, because a lot of the characters play themselves. I mean, you have uh, Johan Rieborg there to the right, he's the main guy, the main character, he plays himself, or as is usually the case when actors play themselves. Um, uh, you know, a, 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 a wacky version of, of, the, of, of themselves. And you have a bunch of cameos by people uh, playing themselves. Some of them only appear for a very short while. And um, anyway, Johan Rieborg, he is Swedish comedian, Swedish actor, very well known. Most people will know who he is. Same goes for this guy, Jonas Gadell. He's more of a, a writer, an artist, but also a comedian. Um, and um, it's about the two of them. Uh, I guess maybe the agent of one of them proposes that the two of them works together or something like that, and then after that they they don't care care much for two they they don't they don't care much for each other, and I guess they never really end up working together. But uh, they eventually form a bit of a relationship, and it's just interesting because um, you don't see a show like this too often in Sweden with a bunch of known people appear playing themselves and a fairly you know a show with some pretty good production value and um, I don't know it's it just it, well a, a lot of fun I, I enjoyed watching this a lot so I just thought that I would briefly mention that so that's it uh, some of these reviews were a little all over the place but um, I do my best anyway um, yeah that's it so thank you for watching and uh, See you next time.